Hi everyone, it's Mike here. It's a beautiful sunny day today, so I thought I'd come outside just to film this introduction and take advantage of the sunshine. Um, no dicky bow tie today because it's far too warm. So, um, anyway, so everybody makes mistakes, including me, and even after all the art journal pages and all the videos that I've done, I still make mistakes. I'm still learning. My creative journey is still going on and I'm still doing things that I wish I hadn't have done and um, I created an art journal page this morning that is a prime example of exactly that. I get so far in with the page and then I do something on the page which just ruins it completely and um, and so I battle to try and save the page. So I will show you what I've done and then I will join you again back at the end. This is my small 5x8 Dilusions journal and I'm just going to begin by adding some white gesso across the double page spread just to try and hide those um, blobs of paint that I've got on there from previous pages. I'm not going mad with the gesso, I'm just adding a very thin layer just to give it a bit of a ground before I begin. And just to make sure it is nice and dry I'm just going to grab the heat gun and give it a quick dry and then I can move on to the next step. So this is a scrap of the postal tissue wrap from Tim Holtz and Ranger and all I'm going to do is just using the matte medium from Mod Podge I'm just going to stick it down make sure there's plenty of Mod Podge there just to make sure that everything sticks down properly there's no bubbles I'm not too bothered about getting wrinkles in it I just want to make sure I've got the entire double page spread covered with the tissue paper Now that I'm happy that both the pages are completely covered and everything's stuck down nicely and it's all sealed in, I'll grab my heat tool and just give it a heat just to make sure it's all dry. So my base coat of colour is the Pale Powder Blue from Reeves. This is an acrylic paint and as you can see it's a nice pale blue with a hint of um, purple in there but not too much. It's only very very pale and all I'm going to do is cover the double page spread with the paint using a baby wipe and I will use two or three coats to, until I'm happy that all of the tissue paper has been knocked into the background and that I can only see um, little bits of it coming through. So once I'm happy with all the paint off my hands and I'm also happy with the depth of colour on the background, you can still see the tissue showing through but it has been knocked really into the background. So all I'm going to do now is just grab my heat tool and give it a nice dry and then we can move on. 
So the next layer I'm going to use this dilution stencil called Honeycomb and I've got a pot of flesh paint from Reeves. Again this is acrylic paint and I'm just going to put the flesh through the stencil using a craft sponge. Now the reason I'm using flesh is because I've got a focal point that I want to use a bit later on and this will tone in quite nicely with that. The colour scheme for this page I have taken from the main focal image which you'll see in a little while when I stick it down. So I'm just adding the final bits of that flesh paint through the stencil on the bottom left hand side of the page and as you can see I've created a kind of visual triangle, um, the three points around the page which just draws the eye around it. So I'll be bringing up the heat gun in a second to dry it between the layers as I always do. I always like to make sure that all of my layers are nice and dry before I begin putting on the next one. So now I want to add some highlights onto the page. So I'm going to be using the Chicken Wire Reversed stencil from TCW and I'm also going to be using another piece of craft sponge and also the Titanium White acrylic paint from Reeves. And once again, I will be stenciling through uh, with the paint in three areas around the page. So where I haven't gone already, that's where I'll add this stenciling and I will slightly overlap onto the flesh too. Overlapping your stenciling between your layers and joining everything up just adds a sense of cohesion and a sense of, um, of movement around the page. So I'm happy with that stenciling so it's time to bring up the heat gun again to give it a dry and then we can move on to the next bit. The next layer I wanted to add a darker colour and for this again I'm going to use the craft sponge and this time I'm using the bricked stencil from Tim Holtz and Stamp, uh, Stampers Anonymous and the turquoise or deep turquoise acrylic paint so I'm going to be adding this brick effect again in areas around the page. I'm not necessarily sticking to that uh, visual triangle this time. I'm actually going to fill in the areas around the page where I think it's actually going to best benefit and be more aesthetically pleasing. So I will be adding it in different areas and joining some of them up too, um, as you'll see. So as I normally do, once I've completed a layer, I normally take a little step back and look at it to see whether or not it needs anything else or in this instance I thought the dark blue was a little bit too dark so I thought that I might just introduce a little bit more white into it just to kind of balance it and knock it back into the background. So my idea was to bring back out the titanium white paint and also still use that same stencil that I've just used, the brick stencil, but this time use the white paint to just knock back some of that colour a little bit. So as you can see the white paint has toned down that blue a little bit and I think it's added quite a nice effect. So ready for my focal point so before I do that I just want to make sure everything's nice and dry so it's out with the heat gun and then we can get cracking. 
But before I add my focal point, I want to get rid of all that excess tissue paper around the outside of the pages. So I'm just going to, uh, with a pair of scissors, I'm just going to very carefully remove it just by cutting all the way around the outside of the page. So just removing the last bit of the tissue now and because I'm not going to be adding on a lot more colour to this page I can remove the polypropylene page protectors that I've got underneath now so I no longer need them. So I'm now ready to add my focal image once I've got rid of all those pieces of tissue paper and just using the matte medium from Mod Podge I'm just going to apply some of that uh, medium to the page where I want my focal image to go and as you can already see I have printed out my focal image and I've already cut it out as well so I've done it by hand um, just with a craft knife uh, I didn't really think you would want to sit and watch me cut all that out so this is it, it's just a photograph that I have of Mr Bentley and Ian. So I'm just going to add those to the page. So this has been printed using an inkjet printer. Um, I haven't sealed it with anything because I have left it to dry for quite some time. I printed it first thing this morning and so it's had a good couple of hours before it's dried. So all nicely stuck down, no bubbles, no wrinkles and it certainly hasn't made the ink from the inkjet printer run. So up to now, things are going quite well. So for my quote, all I'm going to use is my Dymo Letra Tag Label Maker. And I'm just going to type out the quote that I want to use, which is going to sit just below the focal point on my page. And I'm just going to print it. It is self-adhesive, so I don't even have to add any glue to it. And the backing just peels right off so you can stick it down. I love my label maker, it's so much more convenient than having to print quotes or stamp across your page. And as you can see the quote is a paraphrased line from a very very well known song. So time to add a border around my page, so for this I'm using the Potting Soil Brown Archival Ink and a blending foam from Tim Holtz and I'm just going to add a little bit of a darker border all the way around the page just to kind of create that frame. So I'm happy with the border, so I'm just going to grab, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to grab a Pigma Micron pen, this is a number five, and I'm just going to add a little bit of a black border around my quote block, and this is where things started to go wrong for me. Um, I had the idea of adding a little bit of a sketchy border all the way around Bentley and Ian, um, and that's where it really, really went wrong. So this is where I made the mistake. I switched over to the food ball pen and I thought I will just do some sketchy lines, just like a sketchy border all the way around the focal point. Um, but what I didn't do, but I didn't do it very well. Um, as you can see, it's absolutely awful. And I'm just sat there looking at it thinking, oh, well, that's it, you've just ruined the page now. So just take a step back and, and think what you can do. And my first thought was to try and make the rest of the page a bit more cohesive by adding some black splatters to it. So this is what I'm doing now. So I'm just going to cover up that focal image and just add those black splashes just across 
both pages so that there's black on both sides so that it does create some kind of balance. Um, but even after doing that, I'm still looking at it and thinking, no, it still looks absolutely awful. So I thought I'd take a break away from the page just so I can let everything sink in and then process what's happened and how I can get away or what I can do to try and resolve it. So I have a little break, make myself a cup of coffee and then I come back to it. So while I was having a cup of coffee, I did try and remove the food ball pen squiggly border all the way around it with a wet, with a baby wipe, with a wet wipe. Um, most of it did come off, but it still left that trace. So I decided I was going to go around the focal image with my Caput Mortem um, big brush pit pen and create a shadow around the focal point that way. And I just thought, well, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't but I can still use it as an example of what not to do and maybe how you can try and salvage a page that you're not happy with. But as it turned out, the page didn't look too bad after I'd done that. All I needed to do really was just to add a little bit of pop of colour and just a little bit of a highlight all the way around the, the cutout focal point and that kind of brought it back from the dead. Um, so I'm much more happy with the page the way it looks now than I was before and sometimes you do have to take a step backwards just to try and think your way through a situation rather than just kind of giving up and just admitting defeat. So sometimes it is a good idea just to take a break, uh, have a think and then come back at a later day. I mean I could have put this away for you know at least a couple of hours or maybe even for another day um, but you know I don't have that luxury when I'm trying to create videos for YouTube so it was a case of well let's come up with an idea of how we can maybe do it and I think after I added the white border it did kind of rescue it. So the best thing for me to do when I've got a situation like that is just to leave it as it is so don't do any more to it just sign and date it and call it a day and leave it. So there you go, that black line around my focal point of Ian and Bentley really was a huge mistake and I did try and get rid of it by using a baby wipe to clear the lines off um, and then added that pit pen just to try and see if I can pull it back again. Um, I'm not 100% happy with the final outcome but that's okay because that's what our journaling is all about. It's about learning from your mistakes, it's about accepting that you aren't perfect and that sometimes things will go wrong. I hope you did enjoy that and if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up and share with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking this button just here. That's all from me. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.